Okay, my friends, here it is. The video that is going to explain to you exactly which seeds to direct sow only. Always direct sow these seeds. Because I've been getting a lot of questions from you guys about this, which is great because I love answering questions. But instead of replying over and over to the same question, I'm just going to make this video for you. So get your notepad ready. Now, I want to say right off the bat that this is based upon my life experience and my knowledge and understanding. Some of you may have different experience with this. Some of you will say, oh, but I start this or that seed up indoors and it's always been fine. Okay, then that's your experience. But I have found that there are some plants that do not like to be transplanted, meaning that they do not like their roots to be disturbed. And that is because some plants, you when they poke their head above the surface and you see the first sets of leaves, they will then seem to stall for a while. Uh, but what's actually happening is that they are putting down roots and they're putting down roots, uh, a lot of roots at first. And because they want to see how big is the area, how nutrient rich is the soil, how, how big of a space of, uh, of roots can I set? And that will tell to the plant how big it can get then as an adult. It's called the root set. And so if it goes to set its roots and it's all confined to a little cup and then it's like oh man this isn't very good we're, we're not gonna have a very good life so then you go to plant it outside and yeah it'll still grow it'll still do some things probably uh or it may just stay there stunted for a long time but it's never going to be as big and strong and healthy and vigorous and pest resistant as it would have been if you just direct sowed it okay because remember all seeds want to be direct sowed that's how nature does it but some seeds are so delicate we start them up i start up most of the seeds indoors for various reasons but this list is the ones to always direct sow so here we go number one is potatoes of course but you'd be surprised people ask me if i start them up indoors no and i have found it doesn't matter if you cut them into little chunks or you leave the potato whole because it's the same number of vines either way and so I've done side-by-side -side comparisons and the yields have been almost identical but what I have found is planting the whole potato makes for a stronger healthier more robust disease resistant plant for whatever reason next thing is the beans guys beans are amazing they're one of the best food security crops because they dry like this and stay good for pretty much indefinitely so beans to direct sow all of them that means the pole beans like the good mother stollard bean my number one favorite tasting and growing also the rattlesnake bean which can be eaten either as a green bean or let dry as a dry bean kind of like a pinto bean Anasazi beans, the cave beans, I grow those. Succotash beans, guys, this is the original succotash bean from the uh, uh, Indians and in the Rhode Island coast. Also, the uh, dragon tongue beans, these are like the bush beans, and so if you wanna have good bush beans throughout the summer, uh, those and they do by far best direct planted next thing is the peas guys peas are incredible full of nutrients and fiber and we want to always direct sow them yes you can start them up in indoors or in a greenhouse in the gutter method that works it's okay but I have just found that you get the best strongest plants and the best yields if you direct sow them so uh, the sugar bond is a good dwarf one 55 60 days and you're eating peas and you can eat the whole pod the tall telephone pea is the one that we uh, uh, plant into early spring and it gets six even seven feet tall in the right conditions and we shell these peas great varieties next thing is the squash guys the squash is the food security person's best friend because they store for a year if you pick the right varieties and that right variety is going to include the Tahitian melon squash. That's number one, guys. The Tahitian melon squash can grow 30 feet long, and each vine can have between 50 and 100 pounds of food. And this food will store for a year in the basement without refrigeration or anything. Very nourishing. We want the squash. Uh, another one that I've grown with great success is the Jaradale. Very long storage time. A year easy. Uh, but it's so big, and you have to use it all at once. That's the only downfall. An honorable mention, one that I've grown many times, is the Red Curie Squash. Uh, it's a Japanese variety. Very tender and sweet flesh. Only stores three or four months, though. That's the only downside. Next thing is the zucchini, guys. You direct sow zucchini, okay? And you only need one or two zucchini plants unless you plan on becoming a zucchini farmer because they produce so prolifically when they're in the nice rich nutrient dense soil with full sun and ample water that one or two plants will provide you with plenty of zucchini and even giving some to your neighbors next thing is corn guys you always want to direct sow corn because it uses its root set that initial root set to, to, to determine how large to get 
So a good variety is the Painted Mountain, only gets about four feet tall, so for shorter seasons, this is a great drying flint type corn, grind it into cornmeal. Fisher's earliest sweet corn is it also is my favorite sweet corn. Next thing is carrots, guys. You pretty you always want to direct sow carrots, okay? Because any root vegetable you want to direct sow for the most part, because uh, they don't like to be disturbed, because they're just the one big root. And so you will get big succulent carrots if you uh, direct sow them. If you've got nice soft fluffy soil like a raised bed full of uh, a peat or something like that, grow this one, Kyoto Red, delicious, dark red, um, amazingly sweet. I juice those types. Or if you've got hard clay soil or something like that, grow the, grow the new Kuroda. It's very powerful and will produce uh, stout um, carrots even in dense soil. Next thing is another root crop is the beets, guys. You always want to direct sow the beets. Yes, I've heard of people transplanting them, but why? They're so easy to do from seed like this and you get such good uh, robust plants. Definitely the cucumbers guys you want to direct sow the cucumbers. This is the Chicago pickling cucumber I also grow the market more cucumber as a slicer uh, Because the Chicago pickling has a real thin skin and it absorbs the uh, uh, brine really easily when we go to pickle them And it stays crunchy in the brine solution the slicer cucumbers for the most part. They can get mushy They got a thick skin. They're for fresh eating. Okay, we always want to direct sow the cucumbers next thing should be obvious But you'd be surprised. I got people asking me all kinds of questions, which is great But uh, garlic yeah, you always want to direct sow garlic preferably in the fall time But if you forgot to sow it in the fall you can sow it now you can sow it any time between now and another month or so, and we'll call it spring planted garlic. It won't be quite as big as the fall planted, but it will still be good, and you'll still get scapes, and you can eat them over the winter or summer. Next thing is some of the flowers, guys. Uh, flowers, calendula. I always direct sow calendula, and it's so prolific. I have the calendula everywhere. Good quality, uh, pest repellent, and very visually appealing for the garden. Next thing is the giant sunflowers, of course. Sunflowers, you always want to direct sow because they definitely do the root set. They want to spread their roots out real wide. Sunflowers have a fantastic root system to them and they can remediate toxins out of the soil. They can break down and decompose toxins, as can the soil food web, like the Jadam microbial solution and things like that. They can do that as well. But you want to plant these if you're concerned about toxic soil or something that may have come into the air, or something that may have come into the water. You can plant giant sunflowers in mass, like many of them, and it will help to uh, purify the soil and build the soil. Very vigorous root system. And the zinnia. I always direct sow these because they're just so easy. I just sprinkle them out and they all grow up real nice, never had a problem. So that's pretty much the list. Here's a couple of honorable mentions. Any of the green onions or the uh, chives, I always direct sow those directly in place. And don't worry, if you sow green onions, guys, you will sow them and you will think, man, nothing is happening. What, did I get bad seeds? They may take a very long time to sprout, but when they do, look out because you'll have green onions pretty much forever then. They just keep multiplying and multiplying. Uh, another honorable mention is the nasturtium. Now, uh, it generally, I have had better plants from direct sowing them as opposed to transplanting them. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much my list. Other than what you saw on this list is uh, I start everything up indoors other than what's on this list because all the other stuff, you want to make sure it's nice and uh, that it's sprouted. The seeds were, were um, viable and that it's not going to be destroyed by the pests and all the other things can transplant with ease. You know, all the flowers and stuff like that, the, especially like garlic or the coxcomb, all those things are so delicate that you want to start it up indoors. But these plants, always put it right into the soil, my friends. Let me know what your experience is with or without these. Uh, put it in the comments. Let me know your thoughts. Share your experience so other people can learn from you. And uh, give the video a thumbs up. And I will see you next time, my friends.